us this afternoon to the Gospel of John, chapter 16, the Gospel of John, chapter 16. Actually, I want to back up to chapter 15. Now, the name of the message today is Me and Jesus. Why would I say me and Jesus? Because really, that's what it's all about. It's, it's not you and Fred and Joe and John and Susie and Mary Lou and Jesus. It's you and Jesus. Now, yes, there is a body. There is a family. There is members in particular, but it's still you and Jesus. And, and you really need to get this in your heart. If, if we would see this, that it's me and Jesus, because it tells us in the Gospel of John, listen to what Jesus said. He said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, every branch in me. So if you're a believer, if you're a child of God, if you're washing the blood, you are a branch. Now listen, you're, you're not like an oak tree. An oak tree can have a big old branch with a bunch of branches coming off of it. But that's not what this says. This says, Every person is a branch. And that branch is not connected to another branch, another branch, another branch. For in other words, you, you don't go through. Now, it could be that God is going to use men and women, and he's going to use other believers to touch you, to influence you, but you're not connected to God through those people. You have a direct connection to Jesus Christ. Amen. Direct connection. You, you don't, and we can get brothers and sisters to pray with us, to believe with us. We are our corporate body. We are our family. We, we, are, we are the body of Christ. Understand this, and we all are members in particular. So I want you to realize that you are connected directly to Jesus Christ. So it could be that branches all around you are dying because they're not connected, but you don't have to die. And, and, and I've got to really emphasize this because the day is going to come when you stand before God. Now, when I stand before God, the day will come that Mike Yeager will stand before God and I am going to give an account of my life. And he is going to ask me, what did you do with what I gave you? Now, of course, there's the parable, I talked about it this morning, where the, 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 the man who was going to receive a kingdom, he called his servants together, and he gave each one of them a pound, and there was ten servants. And then he went away for a long time, and he came back, and he began to call his servants, one after another, and he called them before him, and he said, what did you do for me? I mean, that's what he's asking him. What did you do for me? Because, see, we understand, what has Christ done for us? He, he did everything for us. He shed his blood. He died. He took our sins. He took our sicknesses. He took our diseases. He took our iniquities. He became the sacrificial lamb. He drank our cup of the wrath and the anger and the judgment and the vengeance of God. Look what Christ did for us. Look, look, God so loved he gave. Christ so loved that he gave his life. He said, no man takes my life. I laid down on myself. And so our, our salvation is connected directly to the redemptive work, the sacrificial work, the, the sufferings of Christ, and so your relationship is connected directly to Christ. So, you know what happens sometimes, you see a well-known minister or some uh, well-known Christian that will fall, and all of a sudden, you got all these other believers falling. Well, what, what, what's wrong with that picture? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. They were connected to God through that man. Why were they connected to God through that man? Is it because they were that man's disciples and not the disciples of Christ? See, my calling and my purpose and my function and my mission life is not to make you a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm not a disciple of Mike Yeager, but a disciple of Jesus Christ. My job is, and Paul said, follow me as I follow Jesus. So I, I'm, I don't want you to be committed to Mike Yeager, dedicated to Mike Yeager, boasting and bragging about Mike Yeager. Maybe God has given me a gift, and maybe God has used me, and maybe God has used this vessel of clay to speak into your life. But guess what? It all goes back to Christ. So we are connected to Christ. And this is what Paul, this is, this is what G, John said, that the, in the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I am the true vine, my father's the husbandman. Every branch in me. Now remember the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It doesn't say, if any man be a Lutheran, a Methodist, a Baptist, a Presbyterian, if he be an assembly God, a church of God, a four square. You know, no, 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 no. You got to be connected to Jesus. 
It's you and Jesus. I, I know the worldly, had a, they had a worldly song, me and Jesus got a good thing going. Well, it's me and Jesus. It's me and Jesus. And if, I, if, if, if that's not the kind of relationship I have, then I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like a branch that's cut off from the vine. I'm going to wither up. I'm going to dry up, and I'm not going to produce any fruit. But it says, every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it might bring more, forth more fruit. So if you're connected to Jesus, I mean, it's you and Jesus. You, you get this, me and Jesus, me and Jesus, that I might know him, Paul said. See, this is what Paul said. Paul said that I might know him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And so my, my, my purpose is to help you get connected to Jesus. It's just like when I was in the Navy, I was an electrician. And as an electrician, my job was to connect the, 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 the load, what we call the load, with a wire to the source of power. That was my job. I would have to run the wiring. The wiring itself was just simply a connection point, and I was to take the wire and connect it to the power source for we could run the motor, or we could run the cooking equipment in the, in the cafeteria, or we could run the radar system. We had to get the power connected. Okay, so this, this wire is really your relationship with God. Knowledge, truth, wisdom, revelation, understanding. You shall know the truth, and the truth will get you connected to Jesus Christ. Everything from Genesis to Revelation is there to get you connected to Jesus Christ. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, or let me say it this way, if I can just get a hold of Jesus, I know I will be healed. No if, answer, but if, if we can get you connected to Jesus, then I want you to know you will be healed. You will be delivered. You will be set free. Your life will be changed. It will be transformed. You will be a different person. If any man be connected to Christ, he's a new creation, a new creature. And so all of the emphasis of what we call the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher is to get you more connected to Jesus. You know, it's like the old, uh, uh, what we call the old radio receivers. You know, now they got the digital ones where you push a button, it scans, and it takes you right to that channel. But you know, the old type of radio uh, radios is you'd have to adjust the antenna, you'd have to turn a little knob, turn it back and forth until you got it perfectly in tune. Well, that's what God wants to do spiritually with you. It, it, remember the time that, that Jesus was going to wash the feet of the disciples. And Peter said, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus says, well, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part to do with me. And then so Peter goes to the radical extreme. and said, oh, Lord, wash all of me. Wash all of me. And, and Jesus says, no, that's not necessary, Peter. He said, all that's got to happen is your feet's got to be washed. Well, that's what God wants to do because our feet is symbolic of our daily living, our daily thinking, our daily walking our daily live life. And so he says, I've got to wash your feet. How? With the washing of the water of the word. He, so what, what, what I'm here to do, spiritually speaking, is to wash your feet in order to get you like that old radio receiver. I want to help tune you in. How are we going to tune you in? You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. To, to preach the mind, the will, the purposes, the plans of God. He wants you to know what his perfect will is. And Jesus was the expression of the Father in the earth. And Jesus declares that if, if, if you're not producing fruit, what's going to happen is God's going to work on you to produce fruit. And if you don't produce fruit, you're going to be cut off. And so in order to produce fruit, you've got to be connected to Jesus. Now, you are, listen what he said here. He said, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. That means dwell, to live, to remain. Abide in me. Abide in Jesus. And, and so that's what the enemy wants to do. You understand all the tricks, all the works, all the uh, connivings, all the manipulations, all the deceptions, all, all the works of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Everything is out to get you to disconnect from the power source, the power 
to overcome. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith in, faith in Christ. Who is he that overcometh? But he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Or you believe that your strength is in Christ. That's why the psalmist, whenever he talked about God, he used it in such personal, intimate ways. He, he said, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my righteousness. The Lord is my desire. The Lord is my belonging. The, the Lord is my shield. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my buckler. The Lord is my, my, the horn of my salvation. The Lord is my delight. My, 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 my. You know, whenever a, a, a person uses the word my, this is my wife. It's very personal. This is my car. It's very personal. This is, this, this is, this is mine. Well, listen, the Lord is mine. The Lord is my shepherd. He's not just the shepherd. He is my shepherd. Now, I realize he's everybody else's shepherd. Well, you know what? You can have 12 children in a family, and every one of them can boldly stand up and say, that's my papa, that's my daddy, that's my father. Yes, they can, and every one of them can say it with emphasis, and they're not lying, they're not exaggerating, because it is that DNA, it is that blood, it is that personal one sip with their natural earthly daddy. Well, listen, my father, Jesus said, I have not yet ascended to my father and your father, my God and your God. You understand, it's you and Jesus. It's got to be you and Jesus. And, and that makes a majority. I, I was talking about that earlier today, and I want to talk about it some ton, tonight also, that, that this is abide in me. You and Jesus, you and Jesus. Don't, don't and listen, pe people, you know, they say, I go to church, but, 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 uh, but there are hypocrites at church. Well, let me ask you something. You know that hypocrite is closer to God than you are because he got between you and God. So that hypocrite must be closer to God because you let him get between you and God. See, that's why the Bible says, lay aside the sin which so easily beset you and run with patience the race that is set before you. And, 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 and so what is getting between you and Jesus? I, I, I don't, it, you know what? Maybe it's not even sin in, in the eyes of the world. Maybe it's not sin. Maybe it's, but, but you've got your priorities messed up. You've got your purpose messed up. You've got your, your, your vision all messed up. It's got to be you and Jesus. Now, if you really are connected to Christ, we're going to see the evidence of it. You know, it's just like in the natural. If a branch is really connected to a good grapevine, if that branch is really connected, it will look like the grapevine. It will have the leaves of the grapevine. There will be, there will be grapes upon that grapevine. There will be, uh, it will be blossoming. There, there'll be bl uh, little blossoms on it when it, when it begins to uh, uh, come to that time of the year. It'll be, it, it will, if you could, if you could take a scissors and snap and, and cut the vine or cut the branch and examine the sap, they would be both the same. Can, can examine the DNA, they would be both the same. Examine the bark, they would be both the same. Examine the meat of the branch and the vine, and they're both the same. So if, I, if it's me and Jesus, if I'm really walking with God, I know people say this, well, my relationship with God is personal. Well, uh, it's not, yes, you're right, it is supposed to be personal, but it should be evident that you're one with him. By their fruits you will know them. How, how do I know? How do I know that that branch comes from a fig tree? Because there'll be figs on it. How do I know that branch comes from a banana tree? How do I know that's a banana tree? Because bananas will be on it. How do I know that's an orange tree? We call the tree after the fruit, don't we? We, we? we don't call an orange tree a banana tree or some other technical word. An orange tree is an orange tree. A banana tree is a banana tree. A grapevine is a grapevine. A cherry tree is a cherry tree. If it's got cherries, it's a cherry tree. Listen, so why did they call the early church Christians? Because they came from the Christ tree. They were called Christians because Christ is Christ. So if I'm a child of God, if I'm connected to the vine, if I really am connected, then the fruits of who Christ is will be evident. And we know the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. And against us there is no law. But we also know there's holiness 
And we could look at different as faith, not just faithfulness. We could look at all the aspects, all the attributes of Christ. For Jesus said he was the expression of his Father in the earth and the brightness of his glory. So when we saw Christ, we saw the Father. So if I am connected to Christ, now don't misunderstand me, I might have fruit that is not ripened, I might have fruit that's not mature, but it is still there. I still got his love. I still got his joy. I still got his peace. I still got some of his holiness, and it's going to develop as I go along. But if I'm not producing any fruit, then I'm not connected to Jesus Christ. I think there's a lot of people who are not connected to Jesus Christ. They're connected to a person who they think is connected to Jesus Christ. They're connected to a denomination that says it represents Jesus Christ. They're connected to maybe some words. Maybe they're connected to the law, maybe they're connected to even biblical truths. But you know what? I, I know you, gotta, you, you can't be connected without Christ, without his word, but do you know you can be connected to the word and not connected to Jesus? That's why it says, but be a doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. And Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. So I want you to see that this me and Jesus, it's not that Jesus is in me, but I'm in Jesus. You know, I, I, I hear people say, well, I got the Holy Ghost. Well, that's not the question. Does the Holy Ghost have you? You know, it's like, well, I got common sense. Well, does common sense have you? You know, you can, you can have a brain and not use it. Hello, you can have a mouth and not use it. You can have hands. There's a lot of people in America that have hands and feet that could work, but they're not working. You know, the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And so my connection to Christ should be reflected in my life. And if it's not being reflected in my life, then does Christ really have me? Am I really a branch connected? Is it really me and Jesus? How can you say you love God whom you have not seen and yet hate your brother whom you do see? He said if you hate your brother, if you have bitterness against your brother, if you're angry with your brother, and, 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 and don't let the sun go down upon your wrath, and, and, and you haven't dealt with your heart when it comes to your brother, then you don't know God. See, if I know God, I'll forgive everybody. If I really know him, Paul said, I want to know you. God, I want to know you. I want to know you. I don't want to know about you. I just don't want to know scriptures. I just don't want to know about the truth. I want to be the truth. See, I don't want to know about the truth. I want to be the truth. I want truth to be manifested in me. I want love to be manifested in me. I want holiness to be. I don't want to know about holiness. I want to know about meekness. I need to know about it. Don't misunderstand, I need, to, I need to know about holiness and meekness and faith and obedience and, 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 and taking up my cross and following. I need to know the commandments of God, but I need to be the commandments of God. I need to be Christ in the earth. That's what the branch is. The branch is the vine in the earth, the branch. There's this invisible vine called Jesus Christ. And if I am truly connected to him, just like a radio is tuned in to the right channel, how do you know if you're tuned in to our radio station, WFKJ 890 AM? Because of the people coming across that radio station and because the call letters every half hour is announced on our radio station. And you've been listening to WFKJ working for King Jesus, 890 Cash Town, PA. How do you know you're listening to WFKJ because the announcer announces it over that receiver that's picking it up. So how do I really know you're a Christian? We're going to see Christ. If I can't see Christ, I'm not saying you're not a branch, but you're not connected. I'm going to see Christ. You're going to hear Christ. You're going to feel Christ. You're going to experience Christ. People need, see it's me and Jesus though. They, it, listen, I can't I can't try to act the part of Christ without being connected to Christ. It's my connection to Christ that allows me to manifest Christ. It's like right now this room is filled with light because, and I remember when we wired this building back in 1985, I was a part of it, connecting all of those wires, running it to our main uh, 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 room where 800 amps are coming in, 240 volts of voltage, 800 amps of power. And I remember the day we kicked the power on and all of these lights came on. Well, how did you know that th that power was flowing into these electrical lights? Because the light came on. 
Now, we got some lights in here right now that are not working. So we know there's nothing wrong with the power source. Now, if all the lights were off, we could say, well, there's something wrong with the power source. Something, something's happened in the, in the fuse room or in, the, in, in, in med ed providing us the electricity. But, but we know that if all the lights are on and this one lights out, something is wrong with that light. We, we don't say, wow, there must be something wrong with electricity. No, something's wrong with that light. If I'm not manifesting the life of God, if I don't have his love, his joy, his long-suffering, his meekness, his patience, his temperance, his self-control, you know, if I don't have the life of Christ being manifested in me, if I get extremely aggravated, if I get really depressed, if I get really, you know, upset, if I get, you know, if, I, you know, if I'm not manifesting his life, then let's not blame God. You know how many people are blaming God? It's so stupid. He's the father of lights in whom there's no verb in the shadow of turning. Jesus told us, if you abide to me and I in you the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can you except you abide in me I cannot produce the life of God without Christ if I'm not abiding if I'm not fellowshipping if I'm not having intimacy if I'm not having oneness with Jesus Christ I cannot produce the life of God I remember one time, uh, time I had uh, good friends of mine Paul and Zilla wait and we would go to their house all the time. They were, this was back uh, 30 years ago. And everything in their house basically was ours. That's the kind of relationship we had. And one day I walked in and Zilla had a beautiful basket of fruit on the table. I'm telling you, it looked so good. Wonderful fruit. And I picked up the apple. It was a golden, red, delicious apple. I'm telling you what, man. It had the weight of an apple, had the texture of an apple, had the feel of an apple. I picked this apple up with eagerness in my heart. I thought, man, look at that juicy apple. And I literally sunk my teeth in to wax. It was not a real apple. But when I bit into it, I found out what it was made of. Now, I'm going to say something here prophetically. We don't know what you're made of until we bite into you. When somebody bites into you, we find out if you're really the real McCoy. <laughs> they bit into Jesus. The Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, the Roman soldiers, Pilate, they bit into Jesus, and guess what came out of him? Love. Love came out of him. Joy came out of him. Forgiveness came out. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What came? How do we know that Christ was connected intimately with the Father? Because all that came out of Christ is the Father. That's all that came out of him. How do we know if Mike Yeager is full, really abiding in Christ? Because if you bite into me, if you bite into me, What's going to come out of me? Gentleness, kindness, loveness, forgiveness, patience, long-suffering, meekness, humility. What's coming out of me when you bite into me? Or is it mean, nasty, accusing, fault-finding, putting people down, attacking? What is coming out of me? See, I really don't know. If I'm abiding in Christ, I can think I'm abiding in Christ. But when you bite into me, now listen, I am not encouraging you guys all to come and bite me, okay? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to hand out my, hold out my hand and say, bite my hand, let's see what I'm full of. I'm not going to do that, okay? I'm not going to tell, slap me, I'm going to find out what I'm full of. But I'm telling you right now, if I am truly abiding in Christ, it's me and Jesus. And if it's, and, 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 and I know that the carnal mind would think, Pastor Mike, if it's just you and Jesus, then you won't care about anybody else. That's, 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 that is the opposite. If I'm really abiding in Christ and his word is abiding in me, then I will love people like he loves people. I will help people like he helps people, not according to how they want to be helped, but according to the leading of the Father. See, people really don't need what they think they want. They really don't. People think, I got to have a bigger house. I got to have a faster car. I got to have a better job. I need a, I need a, I need, I, I mean, I, I, 
I, I tell you what, I've been pastoring since 1977, and I, I saw women who thought, I got to have a husband, I got to have a husband, and they got a husband, and then they, oh, God, I wish I'd never got him. I wish I'd never got him. Because, see, we don't really know what we need. Only God really knows what we need. So how do we pray? Father, not my will. This is what the, Jesus taught his disciples. Father, not my will, but let thy will be done. That's what Jesus prayed in the garden. Oh, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And, and when you can truly pray that with all sincerity, and you can really give it to God, and you've done your part now, and I'm going to talk about that because there's a part you've got to play. You are, you are a very active part of this. I, I put a message up about a week ago, uh, about why I hate Calvinism and antinomianism, and I'm not going to get into the philosophy and the theology of those two doctrines, but, but I had this person come back, and they said this to me. They said, well, you, you're, you're a, a, a salvation by works preacher because you think you have a, a part to do with your salvation. Yeah, you, I wrote them back. I said, you bet you I got a part to do with my salvation. I've got to cooperate. I've got to repent. I've got to confess Jesus with my mouth. I've got to believe in him. That's a part of my salvation. I have got to respond. And if I don't respond, I'm, my, my goose is cooked. Yes, I've got to respond. Now, he calls me, he draws me, but why do you think Jesus always said, your faith has made you whole? Your faith in me, your trust in me has made you whole because that is your participation. It's got to be me and Jesus. S listen, those of you watching this video, you have got to connect into Christ. You have got to plug into Christ. You have got to abide in Christ. You have got to become obsessed, possessed, and consumed with Jesus Christ. That is your part. And if you do not abide in Christ and his word does not abide in you, you will not produce fruit. And the Bible says that he will cast you into a fire, that you are good for nothing but for men to gather together. And that's why we see so many people who confess to be Christians, they're so messed up because they're not abiding in Christ. You know what they're abiding in? They're abiding in the weather. They're abiding in sports. They're abiding in politics. They're abiding in making money. They're abiding in their feelings and their emotions and their opinions. They're not abiding in Christ. Me and Jesus. It's got to be you and Jesus. It, it can't be me, Jesus, and pastor. Me, Jesus, and the apostle. Me, Jesus, and a brother. No, no, we're brothers and sisters, but you know, I'm telling you right now, you can get to the place to where your heart weeps when you see brothers or sisters that are becoming lukewarm or lackadaisical or they're going off into sin or they walk away from God. Or I've had quite a number of close brothers and sisters in Christ who have already died and gone home to be with the Lord. I, uh, when I first got born again, I didn't hang around young people. I hung around people that were 20, 30, 40 years older than me, and, 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 and most of them are gone now. Almost all the elders, all the original elders, except for one, that when we started this church back in 1983, they're gone. And many elders that God had given us since that time, they've all gone home to be with the Lord. As far as I know, there was only one, two elders left when we first began this church, and, 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 they, and, and, and the one went back to Catholicism, and the other one lives too far away to come here. But as far as I know, all of those precious brothers I knew, they're gone home to be with Jesus. Jesus. Well, my relationship with God cannot be established on somebody else's relationship, somebody else's experience, somebody else's uh, walk with God. No, I've got to have a walk with God. I've got to have intimacy with God. I've got to be obedient to God. I've got my cross to carry. And Paul said, let every man bear his own burden, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So I've got my job. See, and you've got to get a hold of this, this reality. You are going to stand before God, and Pastor Mike isn't going to hold your hand, and some other person ain't going to stand behind you. You ain't going to have your family around you cheering you on. You are going to be looking at God right in the eyes, and he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? How did you use what I gave you? Did you use it for me? And either you're going to be like the man who said, look at, Lord, your one pound has produced 10 pounds or five pounds or two pounds or three pounds, or you're going to be like that wicked man who says, well, Lord, I knew this one pound wasn't going to do anything, and so I just buried it. And I lived the way I wanted to live. And he said to that man, he said, 
to his servants, take away what he does have, give it to the ones who have worked for me, and throw him out into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I know there is a modern-day movement to take away all the seriousness of the punishment of those who are not faithful to God. They're trying to tell you there is no punishment, there is no negative results, there is no backlash for living a self-centered life. And I want you to know they're lying to you and there's lying devils speaking to them whether they know it or not. And matter of fact, in the book of Galatians chapter 6, it says, it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Well, Pastor Mike, you know what? If I only felt better, if I only, if I only felt good, if, if my circumstances only allowed. Now, I'm just going to share just a little insight with you right now. In the natural, in the natural, in the natural, I've got a terrible toothache in my left side. In the natural, my left ear feels like somebody's taking a knife and sticking it into my brain right now. I felt that way for the last three or four days. Never told my wife, never told my kids. Didn't stop me from praying. Didn't stop me from being in the Bible. Didn't stop me from seeking God. I'm not walking around talking about, oh, it feels like i got a knife in my brain. I, my, my tooth hurts so bad I can't hardly stand it. Why? Because that has nothing to do with my relationship with God. I'm only mentioning it because it has nothing to do with faith. How I feel, how it looks, what's happening around me has nothing to do with my relationship with God. It's me and Jesus. It's got to be. It's got to be you and Jesus. It's got to be. Because if it's not you and Jesus, if it's you and how you feel, you and the circumstances, you and the problems, you'll never get close to God. He said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. What am I going to be asking? I'm going to be asking for the Father's will to be done. Well, Pastor Mike, if you don't feel good and your body is really full of pain, how can you lay your hands on people and get them healed? Because I do it by faith. I cannot tell you how many times I have prayed for people and I've watched God heal them and I walk away with all the symptoms still in my body. I have prayed for people with cancer and for one time, I mean, I went, I, I think I went six to nine months with all of the symptoms of colon cancer. I'm praying for people who have cancer and they're getting healed. I prayed for a man who had AIDS. He went back to the doctor. He came back and all the AIDS was gone. And I'm walking around and every time I sit on the toilet and I have a bowel movement, it's nothing but green, ugly, slimy, nasty, bloody stuff coming out of me. Pastor, what did you do? I didn't let it get between me and Jesus. I didn't let it get between me and Jesus. You dare see, this is the walk of faith. People don't understand what faith is. Faith is, God, I've got a hold of you, and I'm not letting go. Like Jacob, he got a, it was Jacob and Jesus. He got a hold of God. He sent his wife, he sent his children, he sent his servants, he sent his livestock, he sent everything away, and he got alone with God. And God showed up. Because he said, call on me, I'll answer you. He got a hold of God, and when he got a hold of God, he did not let go. Even when his hip went out, he did not let go. Me and Jesus. It's got to be you and Jesus, friend. It's got to be you and Jesus. It, it that's all it was ever meant. See, that's why in the book of, in the book of Genesis... God created thousands and thousands of birds of the same species, thousands and th maybe millions of fish, millions of, uh, uh, yeah, no, t not just one orange tree, many orange trees. Remember, there was only one tree of life, and one tree of the knowledge, good and evil, but he made many trees, many trees. But when he created Adam, he made one man. Why? Because he was trying to show us something here. It was Adam and God. Now, when Adam finally was put to sleep, God took from his side the woman. This is where the Adam, this is where the man made a big mistake. No longer was it Adam and God. It was Adam, his wife, and God. See, that, 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 you're, 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 you're going to really, you ain't going to make it with that attitude. Now, Please don't understand. I'm saying, you don't, it's not that you don't care about your wife, you don't care about your children, you don't care about those around you, but remember, this is what Jesus said. Listen to me. Jesus said this, if a man does not hate his wife, his children, his father, 
his mother, yea, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Now, now how do you connect those dots? What he's saying is, listen, it is the vine connected to the branch. And if you're not connected to the branch, see, who's going to help me take care of my wife? Who's going to help me take care of my children? Who's going to help me take care of my parents? Who, and because God requires me to. If a man does not provide for his own, he's worse than an infidel. But how am I going to do this? Well, I can't do it because he says, without me, you can do nothing. So if I really do love my fellow man, if I really do love my wife and my children, I must love God more than everything. I cannot be the man, I cannot be the father, I cannot be the pastor, I cannot be the husband that God has created me to be without being intimately connected to Jesus Christ. Now I know this might seem like I'm over oversimplifying it, but it's not simplifying it. It is the absolute stark reality of the truth. You have got to be connected to Jesus Christ. And if anything gets between you and your walk with God, it is because your priorities are not right. Nothing should get between you and God. Nothing. Because if something gets between you and God, it's Jesus plus, it's you plus Jesus. It's you plus something plus Jesus. It cannot be you plus something plus Jesus. Well, you know, Pastor Mike, if I didn't have this pain in my body, okay, well, if it's not, and when the pain's gone, it's gone. Well, Pastor Mike, if I just didn't have these bills, okay, when the, oh, Pastor Mike, if I just didn't have this wife, okay, if I just didn't have that response. No, 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 no. You, you understand? You, 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 you got it all mixed up. You were made for God's pleasure. You were made to be one with God. You were made, you, you, you know, that's why no matter what, no matter what happens, no matter what takes place, no what transpires, if, you know, here's, here's the danger. See, God knows your heart. God knows, and this, I'm just, I don't want, I don't, I'm not trying to fill your heart with fear, but if you, if it's you plus something plus Jesus, the devil's going to find out what it is, and guess what he's going to do? He's going to hit you in that area. He's going to rob from you in that area. He's going to steal from you in that area. He's going to destroy you in that area. Guess what, Job? With Job, it was me plus my children plus God. Me, my children, and God. And guess what? The devil found out because he said, the things which I feared the most have come upon me. And what did the devil, the devil do? The devil got his sons and his daughters. He killed them. See, if you really love your family, if you really love people, if you really love God, Listen, you have got to put God first. I, I, I'll close with this. I've shared this story before. But years ago, the Lord had me going into the Philippines. When I first went there, I was going out into the most poverty-stricken part of the Philippines. And some of you who uh, I have preached with, you watch my videos there because you got Internet out there now. But back in them days, there was no internet. And there was only one main broken up, busted up road. And there was no bridges. And you had to take ferries to get out there. And you could take a plane out there, and, and a prop plane, and land. And, 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 and I'd have to drive for hours in what they call a, a, a jeep. It, they called it a jeepney, a big old jeep with no windows except the windshield. And, all, and, and the diesel fuel would come pouring in because it was diesel engines. And, 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 and we'd be on rough, rocky roads and, and, and nothing but rain. And we'd be stuffed in there with people. And it took a lot of work just to, that was without preaching. It took me a long time to get out there to where I needed to go preach. And, and when I got out there, I found out that it was infested with what they called the NPAs or the New, New People's Army, which I think they were on the retreat now, but it was a communist movement, and they would, they, they would kill what we call the born-again Christians because a lot behind a lot of that was Catholicism. And I'm not attacking Catholics, but the Catholicism of America is not the Catholicism in a lot of these other third-world countries. And so when I got out there and I discovered, hey, man, these communists, they're killing people who call themselves Christians, and, and I'm the only white man out here, and they've never even seen a white man in person, some of these people, and the little Filipino kids would walk up, and still from World War II, they, it was passed on, hey, Joel, hey, Joel, because all white people were Joel to them from World War II. Well, I got out there, and first thing that happened is I began to have dreams late at night, and I would see my head cut off because they would stick it on a, uh, on a post in the town square. You'd wake up in the morning, and there would be the head of a pastor with the head cut off, and you would see your pastor's head stuck on a, on, 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 on a round pole, a wooden pole. 
Well, I began to have dreams, seeing my head stuck on a pole, never seeing my wife and my children again. Well, I finally did my time, and I got back home. Well, the Lord spoke to me, told me to go back to the Philippines. And this is what he said to me. He said, son, he said, if I can use your blood like the blood of a martyr to bring revival to the Philippines, are you willing to die for me? And up out of my heart, I said, yes, Lord. With tears rolling down my face, I said, Father, I'm willing to do that. And so literally, I got ready to go back to the Philippines. My children were all small. I remember that morning, I was, I was getting ready to drive myself to the airport. Nobody was taking me. And I hugged my wife, my precious wife, and my four children. I had four children at the time. My three sons and my daughter was the youngest, and she was probably only two or three years old. I used to call her two-finger Stephanie because she would take her two little fingers, and she'd stick it in her mouth, and she'd suck on her little two fingers. I called her two-finger Stephanie. And so I called Danny the water, watermelon kid because he liked watermelon so much, or sugar kid because he liked sugar so much. And so here I am hugging my children goodbye, tears rolling down my face, hugging my wife goodbye, hugging my little girl goodbye because he told me I'm going to die. He said, get ready to die for me. Get ready to die for me. And I said, yes, Lord, I'll die for you, God. You died for me. You gave everything for me, you know. So I got in my car. And I'm driving my car down to go down to Baltimore to catch an airport at D.C. where I was taken out. And I'm weeping so hard I can't even see because I'm driving away from my wife and my kids. I'm driving away. And I love them so much. But, you know, as I'm driving away, you know what I'm doing? I'm saying, thank you, Lord, for the years you gave them to me. Thank you for the years you gave me my precious wife. And my, I never thought I was going to get married. I should have been dead with all the other gang members I used to run with. I should have been dead when I was playing uh, suicide runs with the trains and, and, and driving on the other side of the road and, and, and headed for someone head on. And, and I should have been dead when I took that overdose. And I should have been dead when I woke up not knowing how I got where I got. And a lot of my buddies, God, they died, racked their cars in either trees or overdoses or drowned in the lake when they drove across uh, Scott and Gary Kukowski when they drove in a snowstorm bar to bar in Wisconsin and they found them both dead, uh, 16 and 18 year old Gary and Scott and I said Lord I should have been dead but Lord you gave me those precious years with my wife and my four children and I just Lord I'm willing, I'm willing God and I was going to die I was going to die, why? because Jesus had to be first. He had to be. He had the right to be. He had the right to be first in my life. He bought the right with his blood. He created me and made me. And so I remember, and I landed in the Philippines, and I was completely, and you know what? I was completely free from fear. I didn't have no fear. I just said, and it wasn't I was trying to cop out. I didn't want to die. I had a lovely wife and, and lovely children. And, and I, but I said, Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing. And you know what? To my wonderful amazement and my great surprise, as I'm over there, he spoke to me. He said, you're not going to die, son. I said, what? <laughs> I'm not going to die? He said, no. He said, I've got a job for you to do yet. I said, what? He said, I just wanted you to do what Isaac did. I said, what's that? Well, he said, Abraham put Isaac upon upon the altar. He said, you put your life on the altar, son. He said, I give it back to you. I said, oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, that's, that's probably been 20, 20 years ago, maybe longer, 12 or 20 years ago. I'm still kicking. I'm still alive. I'm still moving. I'm still, Pastor Mike, has it happened since then? Similar situations? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah preaching in Baltimore, preaching in Philadelphia, preaching in other countries. Yeah, my life has been on a line many times. But you know what? I got the victory that day. I can tell you with all sincerity in my heart right now, I know, God forbid, somebody walk in here with a gun and would tell me, if you don't rec recant Christ, I'm going to shoot your brains out. I say, well, if God doesn't protect me, here I come, Jesus. I'm ready to go. I've been ready to go ever since, ready to die for the glory of God. I got the victory over it. Praise the Lord. But you know what? It's got to be me and Jesus. Amen. It's got to be you and Jesus. You, you can't. This is it's such a deception. I had to learn as a pastor not to look at people's financial giving. 
I had to learn as a pastor not to look at people's attendance. I had to learn this thing. It was hard. It was hard. It was hard. Like, God, why don't they care? Why don't they help? Why don't they give? Why don't they pray? Why don't... He said, shut up. You got it all mixed up. It's you and me. Don't you understand? Get it through your thick head, Mike. Does God talk to me that way? Yeah, he does. It's between you and me, period. Not you and your wife and your children, not you and the parishioners, not you and your circumstances. It's you and me. You got to get this. If you don't get this, you're never going to go anywhere in God. The devil's just going to knock you around from pillar to post. He's just going to laugh at you the rest of your life. You'll never be a threat to the devil. You got, it's got to be between you and Jesus, man. You can't blame nobody else for your spiritual walk and where you're at. You cannot. You can, but it's just a trick of the devil. Nobody. Remember in the book of Romans chapter 8, maybe we'll talk about it tonight. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing but you. But you. But you. See, you're not mentioned in this. It gives you a long list of things that can't separate. Guess what? You're not on that list. Sin is not in that list because you, because what is sin? My will be done. You can separate yourself from God. Why? Because you can become like the prodigal son who walks away from the father. It's you and Jesus. Please get a hold of this. It's you and Jesus. Okay. So I thank God for those of you who are watching. This is the kind of preaching we do here. What? It's a no-nonsense, go-all-the-way, 100% commitment to Jesus Christ. That's what we believe in. We, we, we don't want to be religious. We don't want to be lukewarm. We don't want to be lax.